Welcome to State of Wellness, a one-stop resource for anyone who's interested in worksite health promotion programs at the state level. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Michael Conley, HP CareerNet, and it's Thursday, and it's State of Wellness. Um, and I guess, um, let's see, what do I want to tell you? Um, as usual, if you have questions, you can type them into the uh, questions box, and uh, we'll certainly uh, ask John to get to them. But uh, more more so on this one, I think, than others. Um, John and Teresa are really hoping that you'll uh, take a giant gulp and raise your hand and uh, unmute your microphone and actually, you know, make it a little more interactive than you know sometimes sometimes more, sometimes less. Uh, so if you uh, if you're willing to contribute your thoughts and ideas and such, um, then all you'll need to do is click the little button uh, that raises your hand, and then uh, Teresa or, or John or I can unmute your mic. Uh, very easy. Um, if you are on a computer, of course, you do need to have a microphone attached. Um, but, you know, we will deal with it. It'll be fine. So, Teresa, uh, lovely. Um, my partner in crime for State of Wellness, and as you know by now, Teresa is the Worksite Wellness Coordinator for the State of Kentucky, uh, and a whole lot of other things that, you know, we've only got an hour here, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you care to introduce John? I will, and thank you for that, Michaela, and thanks to everyone for uh, being on our webinar today, and as Michaela mentioned, uh, this was a little bit different today in that we want it to be um, very interactive and discussion based and because we can all think learn better and share better, uh, especially since many of us have been doing the, uh, the guides and tickets for a while and that's our, our focus uh, for today. So we have asked uh, John Morgan from Wisconsin to share uh, some work that they've done on, on their toolkit today. And, First, I want to introduce John officially, though. Uh, John is Physical Activity Coordinator for the Division of Public Health in Wisconsin, and he is a part of the Wisconsin Nutrition and Physical Activity Program, mostly focusing on physical activity, but we also uh, now know the secret's out, John, that he's a worksite wellness expert as well, that he's actually the primary author uh, for the toolkit uh, that was introduced in, what year was it, John, your first the original one would have been 2006. 2006, and so what we're going to hear about today is the updated version and some of the insights into that, and then uh, what I think would be most helpful for uh, for me, I'm anxious to hear what those changes are, and also um, uh, looking at what we're doing in Kentucky and changes we may need to, to make because this all evolves as time goes on and the needs of the businesses change. So. As we hear, uh, after we hear from uh, John and um, his case study on what he's done and where they're at, then we'll uh, lead into some uh, poll questions and we'll, we'll talk about, uh, we want to hear what others on the, the webinar have to share today as well. So, so John, take it away. All right, thank you. Um, I did speak a little over a year ago on this topic, although we have, like you said, updated the kit and we've updated our trainings that go along with the kit, so hopefully I can share some of the things that we've learned in, in doing both of those. As was mentioned, I'm in the Division of Public Health in the state of Wisconsin, which as you all know right now is having a very successful athletic year. You may recognize these folks. So we've got a lot of positives in the state, but we also have a sort of a bad reputation for certain things. And of course the difficult part with doing cartoons, you don't get much audience response via the webinar, so hopefully that would at least make you smile a little bit. Um, and <clears throat> even though that was a cartoon, this was actually a real advertisement from one of our other state agencies last year for the state fair. Um, breakfast of champions, a cream puff and a beer, so I think we need some, some better messaging even within our own state here. Those of you who are working in the worksite setting sort of know that it's a nice setting along with schools and child care because it's a fairly controlled environment. Um, you can have quite a bit of influence over both the physical activity, nutrition, and the other aspects that go on there. So that's 
this is at least in our state where we tend to focus is in the works, work site schools, child care primarily. Um, we have branched into the community to some extent, um, but even at that, it, it, it's a tougher nut to crack, I think. And then when you look at health care time, this basically breaks down to two 30-minute visits a year. You know, there's not a lot of time that you're they're spending in that environment. So we think that the work site's one of the, the rich ones with a lot of potential. This is sort of the quick outline of <clears throat> what we did with our, our kit. Um, you can see that it's, we went through a process on the front end. We got input from folks. We did our first version of it. We pilot tested it from a couple of different um, funding sources. Um, we revised it, and then we tied into it with a worksite award from the governor's office and the trainings on the kit. And then the most recent, um, at the end of last year, early this year, we came up with a third version based on some of the feedback we were getting. I think the challenge for states or other groups is what's, what's your niche? Why, how do you get in? Um, our niche, we thought, was we had a, 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 a um, resource in the kit that got our foot in the door. Um, but ultimately, we need folks who are going to use it to do the outreach and, and provide the training. So um, talk a little bit about how that's happened. Um, one of the sales points that we make to folks who are using it um, and doing outreach to multiple work sites, it, it's sort of the short list of, you know, it's a foot in the door, it's an additional tool you can use, um, the strategies in it are based on either research or best practices from other places. Um, it can be integrated. We have people using certain sections of it. Some are using the whole thing. Some use the assessment tools. So it's, it's sort of a mixed bag, but there's, there's a number of things that they can use out of it. Um, and it's free, which is always a selling point to, to providers. Um, <clears throat> we did do a fairly extensive survey on the front end. We did pilot test it at 33 different sites, um, took that feedback, and basically wrapped that into the second version um, that came out you know, a little bit nicer packaging than the original bureaucratic first version in Word. As I mentioned earlier, the intermediate is sort of the key of how we're delivering the message. I mean, we came up with the kit, we train on the kit, we provide them free, but we need outreach agents, and at least in Wisconsin, this is sort of our short list. It's public health coalition folks, it's human resources, occupational health nurses, and probably the primary one has been health providers or insurers um, are the folks that are doing outreach for us. Um, and so that's been pretty successful. The others category, I think it depends on the state. I know Teresa's had a lot of success with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we tried that route as an additional one, too. They were not so interested. So I think it's going to vary by state, and you have to find out sort of who's already doing something similar and how can you get them to help you spread your message um, and hopefully implement things that are going to have some impact. So what we're trying to do is create that bridge from the kit to individual work sites. And this is just a quick overview of where we've done trainings over the last couple of years. And we've tried to spread them out. And there's additional ones to these where we get special requests. But these are ones that we've scheduled and done. And then the other thing that we've sort of pulled together here is that there's a consistent theme all the way through. Um, the front end assessment of the workplace is in a checklist. Um, we also use that as an evaluation tool. Um, we use those same sets of strategies in the checklist for grant reporting if we have people that we're funding to do some of this. And the strategies are the same as the criteria in the worksite award. So there's reinforcement all the way through that it's not a different set of things that they have to do. It's, it's a consistent set. So <clears throat> what's different about the kit from past versions? Um, before I get into that, it is being used in a number of different states. We're sort of pleased with that. And the various states are using it to different degrees as our individual work sites. But some have basically taken it and, and used it as a whole. Some have modified it. Some have taken pieces. But um, it does suggest that we've had some, some good interest from folks. So there's a smattering around. Um, the states, and in some cases I've gone and spoken at some of these states as well. And then we have a little bit that is being used that got contacted from England and from Australia that they're using it, so it's international. So worksite wellness, you know, sometimes people get hung up, they can't figure out where they want to go. 
Um, that's what the design of the kit was supposed to be, is a simple stepwise process, because it's really not rocket science. And that's one of my favorite slides that I found somewhere. Um, so in the kit itself, there's an intro piece, and that talks a little bit about the focus areas um, that are in the kit, in essence, sort of the chapters. It's wellness components, health risk appraisals, physical activity, nutrition, mental health, tobacco cessation. And then the one we added for this go around is alcohol and other drug abuse. Um, we had some folks who were interested in helping put that together. so. We added that as a, a new target area. The first step um, hasn't changed considerably. The first couple of steps or chapters are pretty short. It's, it's down and dirty information because people don't tend to read from cover to cover. So we just give them a quick overview of why they'd want to do it, um, what does it look like, and some key data that's in that chapter. And then some talk about return on investment, since that's going to be a, a driving point, at least in some work sites. So there's a short discussion of that. And um, like many of the pieces in the kit, there's a lot of links off to other people's work, um, because we want to keep the kit somewhat manageable and fit in a one-inch binder, not a five-inch binder. So um, there's a lot of references off to new places. Um, the one thing I will say with that is um, we found out after we wrote it, put it to bed, and printed it, that between the time we sent it and it got actually printed and out there, we, several of the hyperlinks had already gone dead. So um, that is one of the risks when you put hyperlinks in. We could change them on the online version, but the hard copy one is sort of stuck until the next printing. John, this is Teresa. Is this uh, this return on investment? Is this new? Is this new? Um, no, the, the basics are still the same. There's, I think, a link to a, a study or article that. that has looked at return on investment, but that would be new. Okay, yeah, that might be new. Okay. Okay. The second step we we over um, or changed over a fair amount. Um, we found some information about how much staff you need, and this is just an estimate, but um, it gives people a ballpark of depending on how many employees, how many wellness staff might you want. Um, I would guess that most places are usually under resourced. Um, so maybe this provides some help for those who are trying to carve out a piece of their job description that there is at least some, some general guidance on that. And then um, we updated and found some new information about uh, cost overview. Um, so this is from two different sources you can see at the bottom of the slide. Um, but it talks about sort of an education awareness type program versus a traditional program versus a comprehensive health one with productivity management. And, and some ballpark numbers for what those might cost. So that information is new. And this isn't actually in the kit, but we pulled this off of our applications um, for the Worksite Award. Um, just want to take a look at um, how much money the people that were winning the award were spending per employee. And you can see it's sort of a mixed bag that certainly the, the gold ones tend to be the higher spenders, but even some of the silver ones um, can get by on a pretty small amount of um, money, especially if they're doing a lot of um, policy and environmental changes. So that's just a tidbit of information that I thought was sort of interesting. We, we analyzed that because a lot of times people said, you know, we can't afford to do it. We can't afford to spend a couple hundred dollars per employee. And there's some pretty good indication you don't have to spend a couple of hundred. You can get by with less if you choose wisely. Then we also added a piece on self-care. Um, it's not an extensive piece, but it gives some people ideas as to where they can go for more information. Um, because you certainly want the individual to be doing some things on their own. It shouldn't all be driven by the wellness program and whatever programming is being done um, through, the, through the wellness efforts of the, the employer. And then we have a short section about why a family component. And the rationale reasons, I think, are, are good in trying to sell it. It's, you know, the spouses and kids are going to be on the insurance coverage if you're paying for that as an employer, so you want them to stay healthy. There is an interaction between parents and kids back and forth, so if you can influence one to get healthy, maybe it have some influence on the other family members. Um, and then the, the other is that today's kids are tomorrow's workforce, uh, and you have an option of they can walk in the door fairly healthy, low health care costs, or they can walk in the door with already bad habits established, and you start paying accordingly for whatever period of time. And 
I don't know that most people work in the same place for 40 years anymore, but I guess the point is that if you're incurring costs for 20-year-olds that's at a pretty high level, it's certainly going to um, affect your, your health care costs. And then maybe the biggest one is lost time for parents because they have sick kids. So you want everyone to stay healthy so they don't run off at 10.30 in the, the morning because they have to go pick up a sick kid. So there's a good reason to sort of integrate the family piece. Um, we also have a piece about connecting with health care providers so that you don't have a disjointed piece where you're doing things but you have no idea if the health care provider knows what the risk factors are for your employee or vice versa. You want them reinforcing. So particularly if you're with a specific health plan, you may want to check in to find out how can you better interact with the provider of actual health care. The assessment piece, we didn't change very much. We still have an assessment checklist. It's gone up by 10 questions. We found some new things that seem to be proven strategies. Um, we still have an employee survey in there and other available data. Um, we beefed that up a little bit, but not extensively. And my message on this one is always that this is a very important step that you don't want to skip. The checklist looks like this for those who haven't seen it. It basically walks you through the strategies and asks, do you have it? Is it in process or do you not have it? And then at the bottom, there's breakouts for sort of categories like wellness components, physical activity, nutrition. And when you get to the, the very end, <clears throat> you end up with a scorecard for each of those components. How many things do you have in place or in process or not currently? And this is one of the evaluation tools that we suggest they use at the end of a period, a year or two years go back and do the assessment and see what's changed. So that might be one evaluation measure. The other conversation we're having with folks is that you, know, you want to look at who can you influence and this is from a study that looked at, you know, this tends to be sort of the, the curve, um, bell-shaped curve of what you have in any given um, organization. That you have some very active proponents, some active op opponents, pretty small percent, um, but that you have some supporters, some neutral, and some some quiet opposition. So what you're trying to do is, is move that line and, and get some of those people over to the further to the right side if you can nudge them over. I think from a similar perspective, um, health risk, if you look at this, it's basically that the, the high risk folks um, are also going to file a lot of claims and are going to be pretty expensive. And what you want is low risk folks who are low maintenance, low cost. So one of the things we're, we're highlighting more in, in this version of the kit and also in the workshops are these lists of health risk behaviors, um, which are from Michigan, the Eddington's group, and the list has changed slightly since when we came up with this, but it's sort of a quick and dirty um, self-assessment of where do you sit on these various health risk factors um, with a cutoff criteria point, and then based on the responses, you get put into a low risk, medium risk, or high risk grouping. So um, what they're finding, obviously, is the, the green group, the zero to two high risk group, is also pretty low cost. So this is a, a very simple way to sort of get a feel for what does your um, employee population look like. And then what they found from that was that this is sort of the breakout in one um, example. 55% was low risk, 28% medium, 17% high. And you could see the relative cost for those employees and how it varies considerably. And what it broke down to then is total cost, even though medium and low were small percent of the population, they were eating up much more in terms of health care costs. So the, the message there was, can you move those folks? Can you get the high risk to go to medium, medium to go to low? And I'll show you a little bit in the evaluation of um, some things that they found. Um, step four piece is, is all the strategy sections, and they are two to three page summaries for the different components. Um, the focus to a large extent is more on environment and policy change, probably less so on individual just because of the intensity or cost tends to go up if you're doing things on an individual basis, and the reach is not as great as opposed to maybe changing the, the policies. And so this is a big piece of the training that we do, and it's also in the kit, sort of breaking it into three groupings, behavior group, 
um, an environmental group and a, and a policy type group. And if you don't think the environment, you know, is sort of changing things, um, this is the part where at least we'll interject some humor into it. I mean, the environment's certainly changing, and so it's in some cases we're engineering our way out of activity, physical activity. This was an interesting photo that someone sent me. You know, we don't want kids to be active. We want passive areas. I had never seen that type of sign before. And then this one did crack me up. You can't play soccer in this area, but you can play it over there in the archery range. So <clears throat> there may be an injury prevention um, piece to this as well. So when we talk about um, how to factor in those three things as examples on nutrition, um, you might teach employees how to plan meals ahead. You might provide them with recipes, tips for selecting and preparing fruits and vegetables, for instance. From an environmental level, <clears throat> we have a number of community-supported agricultural setups here um, that actually drop produce off in, in the summer season, since we have a relatively short growing season here in Wisconsin. Um, but that's a way to get fresh fruit and vegetables delivered, and if it's easy, you probably have a greater amount taking advantage of it than consuming. Um, you can work with restaurants nearby to have more substitutions or healthy options. Um, <clears throat> and you can certainly within the worksite setting have healthy food policies for meetings, conferences, etc. And in our case, um, it's a very health maintenance organization heavy state. Um, we have some of the carriers will give a $200 rebate for if you buy into a community supported ag share where the produce is delivered to the, the worksite. This is just an example of what the strategy pages look like. They're broken down into low, medium, and high resources, um, and it's fairly arbitrary. It's subjective which group I put them in. Um, <clears throat> but obviously, an on-site exercise facility is a lot more costly than flexible work hours, um, assuming you have a business that doesn't need people on a production line, for instance. And then the far right columns break it into policy change, environmental change, or individual behavior type change. So if you're looking for um, a good cross-section of things, you can sort of see which ones it fall in, those fall into. <coughs> and then for each of the strategies listed, we would have then a short description or a link off to somewhere. Um, so for instance, low resources number three, map out on-site trails, the link goes to um, map my run. So you could do that for your, out your front door from your business for a couple of different walking or running routes, for instance. So that's how it's set up. Um, this is just an example of pieces from health risk assessments. <coughs> Same idea, broken into low, medium, high. So making decisions. Um, we did not change this a whole lot. It's sort of the, the same list of things that you might want to look at. You might want to look at what your assessment came out with. You might want to look at priority strategies that you came up with. You know, check the data you have access to. But then um, we did add this piece about rather than start up a whole lot of new things, you may want to first look at what are you already doing that could be improved and maybe some easy successes <clears throat> so you get some positive feedback. Um, we do emphasize more of the greatest impact piece, which is probably less individual and one-day events versus maybe long-term um, changes. And then there's some worksheets that you can use to, to help you get to this point. Here's one of the pieces I think that we've been really pushing lately is when you start thinking about what are you going to do in your work site, <clears throat> think in terms of impact with dose times reach being impact. The dose would be how much of a given strategy is occurring, such as minutes of activity or number of fruits and vegetables eaten in a day. The reach would be what percent of the target population is being affected. So if one dose of activity is equal to 10 minutes and the goal is 30 minutes per day for adults, you want three doses. So one way you could get at that would be to hold a one-day event <clears throat> where everyone walks for 30 minutes, it gets three doses. Half the staff participate, <coughs> which is a good number. Um, so you get three doses times 50% of the employees, or assuming 100 employees in the example. The impact's 150. Now, <clears throat> as an alternative, what if you do a new policy that encourages daily walk breaks at lunch? 
30% of the staff participate, also a pretty good number. They do it most days of the week, let's say three, for 20 minutes at a time. So they get two doses times 30% of the staff <clears throat> equals 60 for dose times 150 days that they do it. That's 9,000 doses. So considerable difference between those two options. So when we're talking to people and say, what's going to have the most impact long term, you know, think in terms of reach times dose. The other new piece we put in <clears throat> was packaging of things. Um, uh, what we're actually doing in our um, department here is we're doing quarterly focused things. It's not that we don't do others, but the focus, for instance, in a quarter might be physical activity. <coughs> And then we try and break it into, are we doing some educational pieces, some, some larger presentations, any trainings? Um, are we going to combine with campaigns that might be running in the area? Um, are we going to send them off to the internet? And then what policy or environmental changes might, might we make during that quarter that could make a, a difference? And then so what we did was break them down into, so here's some things we could do for the quarter of physical activity. You know, there would be an initial um, blast email out. We could send them off to real age, which is a way to calculate your health habits and what your real age versus chronological age could be that they could do in about 10 minutes. <clears throat> so it's like a mini HRA that they would do online. We gave them forms to follow and, and track their activity. And then we interjected within that trainings, presentations, <coughs> campaigns, etc. So it was just one way to package where they're getting a pretty heavily focused dose of something for a quarter. The summer quarter was nutrition because we actually have um, fresh produce available. Um, mental health was in the winter, et cetera. So just a thought. Evaluation. We came up with a new report card. Um, <clears throat> basically some things that you might want to measure. So <clears throat> if you remember that um, a couple of slides that looked at high, medium, and low risk status based on 13 risk factors. You could measure that, for instance, um, from year to year. You could certainly measure health care costs, what the insurance um, program is costing you. You could measure changes on the assessment checklist. You could track how many policy or environmental changes did you put in. Um, and then in terms of sort of participation, you could look at rates for health risk assessment, incentive programs, campaigns, um, how many are attending, various presentations, et cetera. And then you could also <clears throat> measure participant satisfaction through some type of surveying. So that would be one way to sort of package at the end of the year if someone asks, you know, are we making a difference? Those might be measures that you could get without too much difficulty to sort of show, yeah, we're, we are making a difference. And then here's some of the, the data that came out of um, looking at low, medium, and risk factors and could you change them. Um, after one year, they found that the, there was a shift of people that um, the number of folks that were in the low risk <clears throat> category went from 56 approximately to 65. And you could see the other two corresponding ones dropped to make up that difference. So you were moving people from high down, whether it went from high to medium or high to low or medium to low, um, you are shifting the, the risk and ultimately the cost. And there's been a fair amount of evidence that if you do that, um, the actual healthcare utilization will drop pretty significantly. This is just another um, resource that you might want to take a look at if you haven't seen it. Better health, better outcomes from nationwide better health. <clears throat> Might give you some ideas on how to measure impact. Although one of our discussion questions coming up is how do you do that on a statewide basis. So I'll be curious if others have great suggestions on that. But they looked at outcome measures from five different things, <clears throat> from financial to utilization to clinical improvement to behavior change and engagement. So they had categories for those five items that they were looking at to, to try and track. And there's the <clears throat> in that document, there's a considerably um, greater amount of information provided. So <clears throat> they looked at a couple of things. Um, participants who eliminated their baseline risk factor of blood pressure, cholesterol, obesity, um, and the percent change <clears throat> that occurred in those um, was pretty significant after they instituted and tracked um, what was happening in the wellness programs. So. 
And then they did a similar thing with risk factors and showed that over time, from year one to year three, the low risk folks numbers started, kept going up. Um, the moderate risk <clears throat> stayed fairly even, and the higher risk ones came down. So again, an easy way to track if you can get that information. Um, so there are pieces where utilization included things like medical and pharmaceutical use, absences, and productivity measures. <clears throat> Financial, they said, should primarily um, be looking at as a determinant, not as a sole reason for program success. And they measured it by claims cost per employee and projected cost savings based on what they came up with was estimated cost factors for various um, risk factors. Okay, so the last piece I want to touch on before we open it up um, is outreach, which is, at least from a state perspective, uh, a key ingredient of how do you get the message out, especially if there's only one of you or, you know, point one oh of you, whatever it might be, or how much time you spend. So outreach is important, and this is actually a, a tourist attraction in Wisconsin, the House on the Rock Resort. They have this infinity room that looks like you're getting smaller and smaller as you go out towards the end. So what we've done is, as we've done the trainings, um, we initially opened them up to anybody. Um, we did a couple last year that were targeted more so at people who did outreach, um, health care providers or health care insurers. And we said that if they went through the three-hour training, they could be a registered trainer, which doesn't bring with it anything other than they get posted on our website. But what it does give us is people who are going out to provide um, some type of service already to use some of the pieces of the kit to maybe institute better strategies that might be occurring otherwise. And so we have a list now of about 50 people who are doing this um, throughout the regions. And we pay them nothing. Other than we list them on the website. And the upside is that we have a pretty high HMO content here in Wisconsin, so it's pretty competitive. And so if one of the organizations has a approved trainer, it pretty quickly is the the uh, competitor uh, also will send someone to get trained so they're not at a um, disadvantage. So our goal is ultimately to get folks in all the regions and to get every last section of Wisconsin covered until ultimately we control the entire state. It's a diabolical plan that we're trying to put into place. The other thing I mentioned was we have Governor's Worksite Award. It's an online, very easy to complete. They have to send us a couple of pieces of information besides filling in the online application. Um, but this gives them nice name recognition, um, and it's based on <clears throat> have they implemented some or most of the strategies that are in the kit. And those are automatically assigned point values and scored. So on my end, it's about 10 minutes for me to score them, send an email out that they want, and forward something over to the governor's office so that they can send them um, a couple of award items and get a press release. So <clears throat> I guess from a state perspective, so what? Does it make any difference? Um, we're still struggling a little bit with that. Uh, you can see we certainly sent out a number of the kits. We've got a lot downloaded. Um, that section has gotten over a quarter million hits on our website. We are now up to almost 1,000 participants in the workshops. <laughs> Most of them like the workshop and the kit content, and we've had a number of award winners. Annually, we send out a survey for anyone who's taken the training or asked for the kit just to get feedback on did they use it um, and how many pieces or sections did they use. And what we found from what's a small sample, 157 responses out of a mailing list of about 1,000, so it's a subset of people who've been trained are bothering to take the time to respond. But we have almost 1,300 work sites that it's being used in. Um, and if you look at the employee numbers for either those work sites or <clears throat> the folks who are trainers that get outreach to multiple work sites, it comes out to over 200,000 employees. Now, what we don't know is how effective is it. Um, we can't get that kind of information, although we're trying to come up with a way to do that. But in terms of at least the reach piece, the message is getting out. The dose part is the part that we don't have an answer to at this point. 
So if you're interested, all the information is up on the web. Um, you can certainly download it. We have hard copy. If anyone wants some, just shoot me an email. Um, my information is up on the website. I don't know if I have it in the next slide or not, but you can get to our website. The easiest is just to Google Wisconsin Physical Activity. So first off, I guess any questions on the presentation piece? Um, and when we're done with those, we're going to do a couple of questions for you and have some follow-up. Now, Teresa, do you see the question or the, thing, the comment from Ed? Uh, let's see. Um, That's all right. I can, I can take it. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing it because of my... Okay, I see it. Yeah, someone had written in. Thank you. Nationwide Better Health closed its doors this summer. You can't get that publication oh. anymore. <laughs> okay. That was... That's news to me because I was probably on the website only a couple of months ago. So, thank you. I th I thought it was a good publication anyway. I'm sorry that they've closed. What a bummer. Well, I guess that just speaks to the need to uh, to keep your toolkits up to date. Yeah, and it shows what we can learn from from each other. <laughs> right. Would you like me to launch the first poll, John? Um, well, I see another question here. Will the oh, right. Slides be available afterwards. Yes, they will. Uh, and if Kelly were here, they, were, they would be available now. Darn it, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly's off on vacation. Can you believe it? And John, you see that one about your, uh, can you put your website address up again? Yeah, I do see that one now. Of course, you said uh, if you do a search, I think even Wisconsin Worksite Wellness Toolkit, I think it comes up. I've, I've done that a lot, doesn't it? It does, and we've tried to put a lot of keywords in. I've also run our website, so I've tried to put in there, when you look up the best Worksite Wellness Kit, it comes to us. So <laughs> I'm trying to taint how you get to our website. Yeah, you've been, you're getting easier to find because I, I go to it all the time, John. I, I do see a, another question. Do you see it? Do you get grants for, for, for these? Yeah, that's from Jeff. Uh, programs. I mean, how, how have you uh, been funded to, to do all this super work you've done? Um, well, I'm funded by CDC grant, programmatic grant, um, and it's a piece of my job. I'd say it's a relatively small piece. It, it varies. Sometimes it's a you know, most of my day, but there'll be long lull periods where I'm not spending much time at all. Um, we provided grants when we had some money, and we're talking small amount of grants, like $5,000, to work sites to sort of pilot or <clears throat> institute something to see if it can get enough traction to grab hold and run with it. Um, but this year, our funding went down, so we didn't actually send any money out for folks to do different things, which work site wellness would be one of the ones that we've funded in the past. Uh, John, what about um, funding as far as from the other programs with, within your Department for Public Health, since we know that Worksite Wellness reaches or touches all of or most of those different health areas? Uh, what about partnerships? You know, it's so much about integration now. Can you give us just a little bit of insight in, in what you've done in that area? Um, we're still working on that. We actually have a pilot grant fund for that as well. Um, <clears throat> the other chronic disease areas in our state, um, cardiovascular, cancer, diabetes, etc., have sort of ceded to us the leadership for the worksite setting. And they help cross-promote and um, we're trying to get away for them to, to probably get a little bit more involved with that. But um, like most states, we've had problems in the past where each individual program is doing similar work um, and sort of not maximizing resources. So at least in this one area, there was agreement up front that since we were f the furthest along of the different chronic disease programs, that we'd be the lead for it. Rather than each program uh, attempting to come up with a, a way and a guide to reach employers. Correct. Right? Yep. Okay. There, there's another question. What are the responsibilities of the regional uh, trainers? The responsibilities are pretty uh, minimal. It's basically that they've agreed when they have time that they will train if they get called. Um, but they have no obligation. If they're too busy, they don't have any obligation to do so. 
Um, the upside, I guess, is I can't go to individual work sites and, and do this, whereas they can because they're looking for business. Um, so if they're in an area that maybe want to sell various products to work sites, um, there's some advantage to them using some of those tools that they might be able to use. Right. It's, it's much of the way we operate in, in public health. We can often get that information out in those tools out and then it's going to be on a volunteer basis or a, a motivation by that person in that organization what they do. And fortunately, many really do a lot of great work even on that volunteer basis or for their organization. Then I see one, how do you get insurance programs to pay for the wellness incentives? Um, in Wisconsin, like I say, they're mostly health maintenance organizations and they see some value to you know, look at the prevention side rather than treating people. Um, it's a mixed bag, but for instance, in the Madison area, there's five major providers. <clears throat> and so if one offers something, the others tend to offer something similar so they're not at a competitive disadvantage. Um, it's less in the case when you get up into northern Wisconsin where there may only be one major health care provider. Since they have no competition, they have less incentive to, to do so. Let's see. So, so then another question. Uh, Paul just not for mentioning the name of who it's from. I'm having a little bit of difficulty seeing that. But have you found that the health insurance carriers have leveraged the benefits plans of the employers to uh, enhance the, the toolkit activities? Um, I would say yes, I mean, because a number of the incentive programs would match up fairly nicely with some of the strategies that are <clears throat> being recommended. So from that standpoint, yes. And let's see, are you working with uh, government agencies in other states or mostly businesses in other states? But your work is Wisconsin-based, right? Yeah, my day job is, is Wisconsin-based. Um, I've gotten calls from other states to get input on what we've done and um, get pieces of the kit. Since it was paid for on a federal grant, it's, it's free to anyone, and people can take it and modify however they see fit. Um, I've done some speaking in other states um, as a side light to, to my state job um, because since I'm only paid to improve the health of Wisconsin folks. I can't leave the state to go and do that on, on uh, state time. I can do it on my time. Right, right. And I think this is a good time. It leads us into maybe some of our um, uh, poll questions and further discussion so we don't run out of time. So are we ready to do that? Sure. Here is, let's see, launch. Here's the poll, first poll question. Patrice, can you read it? Yes. So what type of organization do you work for? Government, healthcare insurer, academic, wellness service provider, or other? Give you a couple minutes. No, a couple seconds. All right, I'm going to close. Close the poll, and then I'm going to share the results. And it looks like most people are in government, but there's a whole lot of other people. What are those other people doing? Where are they working? Let's second. John and I will. Yeah. Sorry for all you in the other category. We had we only have five pick list items, so we had to lump other groups that we would have probably listed separately. Oops. Well, that probably wasn't a good option. Okay, so let me, I've lost my poll. I think this shows the interest in the variety, and I guess we don't have anybody in the academic setting today, although often we do on our, our webinars, but as we know, State of Wellness really focuses on those, those people that work in positions similar to John and myself, but um, Others often can gain insights into our uh, toolkits and resources out there. So, good. Yeah. Okay, so let me. I'm gonna give. Well, I'll just. I'll just hang on to control so you guys can see the. Uh, the slides or the. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say here. The poll results. 
Okay, here's the second one. You guys seeing it all right? Yes. Do you want to just read it out loud, Teresa, in case you know somebody's listening? Um, that... Does your state have a worksite wellness guide or kit? Yes or no, or, or you don't know. All right, I'm going to close that, share the results. Are you able to see that? It looks like 50% of uh, people do, in fact, have kits. Do you see that, John? Yes, I do. And just FYI, there's a lot of good kits and information out there. Um, the other place you may want to go, and I should have had a slide for it, but if you Google on the Physical Activity Society, there's a website that has a matrix of resources. There's now about 700 in there. And so, for instance, if you went to worksite toolkits, I believe the count currently is like 26 of them are all in one place if you want to see what's out there. So Physical Activity Society, if you Google on that and then go into resources and you're looking for the matrix. How about that? I didn't know that. Yeah, we haven't advertised that as well as we probably should have because and it's not just worksite. It has community settings, um, health care, schools, et cetera, and it has toolkits, um, survey questions, a fairly broad list of things. Some are more complete than others, but there's usually something in every category. It would be great if we could get a, a, a link, John, you know, for, for state of wellness and, and put that on there. I think that would be helpful because it helps so much if you can find these resources in one location and just right. one other interesting note on our on our poll you know when you see those that that don't know or we're not sure if your state has one and you just don't know about it or if there really isn't uh, uh, one there but often especially people in private business not associated with the, the government don't don't know uh, if they have one so you may want to do a search in your own state as well because the benefit on having that toolkit for your state is those uh, those links and local resources, at least state resources and state phone numbers are in them, is what we're finding. Okay, and I think... Well, maybe if we have a few minutes at the end, I can pull that web page up. If... Okay. Well, would you like me okay. to, uh, to do the next survey? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So... Um, I guess it's, if you have a toolkit, is your state planning on updating it? All right, well, people are pretty darn quick on the trigger, so I'm going <laughs> to give you three more seconds. And I'm going to close it. And I'm going to share the results. Ooh, kind of even on the yes and no and higher on that I don't know. Hmm. Well, we do have a couple of follow-up questions for this one. Um, for those of you that have said that you, you do plan to change your toolkit, what do you plan to change? And you can either type that in to the question box. Um, your answer, or if you uh, are so brave, you can raise your hand and. Uh... Oh, come on! Someone raise your hand, and we can hear <laughs> someone else talk besides us. <laughs> I don't know why it's so intimidating. You know, I I never met a microphone I didn't like. <laughs> can you raise someone's hand for them, and we put them on the spot? No, that was <laughs> so only we know. <laughs> I was looking through the list to see if there was one I know and I would do that to them. No, I'm kidding. No, 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 you can't do that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, Rose says that, do uh, uh, you see the, the in the uh, questions box? She says uh, Kauai, Kauai has uh, Impact, is developing a toolkit now. Who's doing that? I was, I'm not able to see uh, that. Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh, Hawaii. They're, yeah. 
developing a new a new kid? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I didn't uh, get rid of the poll. That's why you couldn't see it. Yeah, still having some trouble seeing yeah. so that. So, who, who is our person from Hawaii? Do they want to speak and tell us about it? Um, I don't know, Rose. <laughs> you feeling wild? Crazy? Extremely brave? No? Doesn't have to. Right. But that's great to know. Um, Teresa, maybe we, um, maybe she could, uh, uh, how to get on. Oh, she is willing to talk. Um, let me find you in the list, Rose. I think if nothing else, she should fly the three of us out there to help consult on that. Thanks for saying that, because I really wanted to say that. Yeah, I think we should broadcast the webinar that we may ask her to do from out there. <laughs> I like the way you guys think. Rose, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, very yeah. well. All right. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Um, we're uh, the Statewide Nutrition and Physical Activity Coalition, and we're the Kauai County Coalition, and we're just um, working on, we did a pilot program last year, and so um, learned from that, and we're trying to get more buy-in and uh, more organizations to participate. So we're developing our toolkit, and we actually reviewed quite a few, and one was Wisconsin. Um, and so we're just in the planning stages of this right now, and so this was perfect timing to learn more about it. Oh, oh great. great. And Rosa, you work with Katie Richards there? She um, is part of the statewide coalition. Um, we're working under her. I know that she has uh, started one for government agencies through the state of Hawaii. Um, so she's working on that, and we're working on one specifically for Kauai employers. Okay, good. Great. Well, okay. We have another follow-up question. All right. Okay, well, thanks for being so brave. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I wanted to not put Rose on the spot on, on our next follow-up question, but unless she can jump back in there if she wants to. but. Uh, what have been your major challenges in creating or disseminating your wellness guide in your state for those that do have a guide and have gotten it out there? What has been your major problems to get it out there? So anyone that wants to send us a question or jump in? Yep, feel free to type it in, type your answer into the box or, or be very rose-like. <laughs> So why don't we, um, should we do the last survey while people are pondering upon that and see? Yeah, let's do that. We're going to run out of time, so out. let's do. Yep, okay. All right, sorry, I forgot to do that. Okay, so everybody ought to be able to answer this one. Would you... Would you please read that, Teresa? Oh, what is the, the level or scope of your um, position's wellness activities? Is it statewide, regional, city, outreach to multiple work sites or a single work site? All right. Three more seconds. What's funny watching the uh, poll results sort of... Uh, jockey for position. I'm going to close the poll and I'll share the results. Hmm. Outreach to multiple sites is our largest segment, followed by statewide. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. But this is good because it's going to be a good lead in then to the follow-up questions of how do you manage it when you start talking about a multiple worksite or large regional state effort. So let's launch into that one. Right, so if anyone has anything in, to add to, to jo the follow-up question that John just put out there, so okay. how are you doing it? How, how are you doing that large-scale outreach? Because that's what we're doing in uh, Kentucky, and of course I know that's what John's doing in Wisconsin, and we all know there's a lot of challenges to it, so... Mm. We're hoping to learn something from from some of you guys today. So, yeah, and, that, and anything I guess 
to describe how that's going for you, but then my very specific related question is, is anyone measuring it from multiple organizations or on a regional level? Because that's where we're struggling to, how do you get that data? There's logistical issues, there's confidentiality issues, et cetera. So if someone's mastered that, I would love to have them talk about it. You know, maybe that's a good um, future topic is how to how to manage that that uh, data collection and with all the the different uh, parameters and and geographic limitations and all that. So, we've got any uh, comments or questions on that, Michaela? Nope, doesn't look like it. I guess they're. Well, uh, <laughs> Well, I'll just share on, um, you know, we were talking just a moment ago on on our, what are the big challenges, what have been the, the, the major challenges, and uh, one of the things uh, in Kentucky, of course, it's often it's funding, that's the one we often mention, but also then often in partnering, uh, you know, with other organizations and forming those uh, partnerships as we've done in, in Kentucky, we, we took more of the, I call it scattered, but I don't mean that in a totally negative way. We didn't do formal trainings often. We went where the need was and delivered presentations and seminars and, and talks and things like that. And that's very difficult to measure. So that's, that's been difficult for us in Kentucky, one of the things that we've, we've dealt with. You know, as we just have a couple minutes left, I'm thinking, you know, maybe this is a good opportunity to ask people, you know, what, you know, what, what would you like us to cover? Uh, what, what are the things that are really, you know, in the overall sticking points for you? Um, we do have a good webinar coming up next month that I think uh, should be pretty valuable. Michael Weather, thinking about that, can you give me the screen shot back again and I'll show where that matrix oh, yeah, yeah. resources yeah. is. Sure. All right. There you go. Yeah, so if you have ideas on things that you would like us to cover on state of wellness, um, you know, please let us know. Okay, so Teresa, you're my can you see the physical activity practitioners website? Yes. Okay. So this is where, if you're looking for resource materials to get ideas, under the resources drop-down box, there's NSPAPPH matrix, which I know rolls right off your tongue, the NASFAP <laughs> matrix. But within that, then are resources nationally for worksite setting, individual communities, preschool, healthcare, care, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so then if you were you can click that way, or you can go see what your state has put in, or I've put in for your state, depending on who had more time. Um, but under Worksite, for instance, you can see awards programs, evaluation measures, intervention materials, et cetera, that list of things that you might be interested in. Um, and then, as an example, here's listings of toolkits that exist from other states. So if you're looking for more one-stop shopping, and you're looking for something fairly specific, you might be able to find it here. As you can see, there's a lot out there. So it sounds like you have a lot to do with this website. Yeah, so the short address is the nspapph.org. We'll get you to the home page. Or you can Google on um, Physical Activity Society. That's great. And like I said, you can potentially find, let's see what's happening over there in Kentucky. <clears throat> and that would list different resources that Kentucky's put in. So. Yeah, this has really been, been helpful. And, um, you know, it's all about trying to find out what others are doing so we can learn from each other, not recreate. And, and I've used this site often myself to, to get in there and go to this one one stop and 
Awesome. And you, you can do that also uh, on the, the state of wellness for, for the states that have presented so far, you know, like Wisconsin, Kentucky, North Carolina, and many others. They're, they're on there as well. I think we definitely need a, need a link here. John. Yeah, for sure. But you know what? We are out of time. I don't know what happened. <laughs> so, John, thanks so much for being here. Teresa, um, you know. It's all you, baby. Couldn't do it without you. <laughs> well, in, in our first attempt to be more interactive, I think we got some good input, but we'd certainly like to have more. So maybe if you have ideas or suggestions that you could send, that would be great. Because although it's always nice having someone present, it's probably almost better to find out from multiple folks what's working for them. So. Yep. I, I agree, John. That's perfect. And this has been our um, beginning attempt to make this more inner uh, active and so uh, you'll see that more on more more and more as we go forward to to hear from from the rest of uh, of you out there. So, but thank you all for participating today. Yep. Thanks so much, right. everyone. Um, hope to. Uh, oh yeah, we have John John Harris and Katie Bell tomorrow for the um, third year in a row with the Healthways Wellbeing Index. So, come and hang. Come and be with me. <laughs> See you. See you soon, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.